Hello? Hello? Hello, who do we have here? You have Ron Russell here. Welcome hey. to the Wise Guy Show! <laughs> Ronnie! Not so! How are you doing? So what, what is your show called? The Wise Guys? The Wise yeah. Guys Show, yeah. So what kind of wise guys are you? From Brooklyn, wise guys? No, no what better Brooklyn. New Jersey. Brooklyn. Jersey, what Jersey, Brooklyn. Jersey. Oh, you know what's wrong with Jersey? You can get into it, but you can never get out of it. That's there right. You, <laughs> you got to pay to get in, but no, you got to you get in for free. You no, got to pay to get out. You got no road signs. Everything is screwed up. Go left, go right, go up, go down. It's very confusing. <laughs> but anyway, being from Jersey is okay. I'll forgive you. Welcome to Brooklyn. the Wise Guy Show, Ron. Okay, thank you for for having me. This is going to be fun, I could tell. Yeah, it's so what do, you want to, what, what do you want to talk about? All right, let's start off with Ron Russell and uh, where he got started to be an actor. Oh, you want to go back that far? I came yes, over with yes, Columbus. yes, I have some information I, I on you. I came over with Christopher Columbus. And, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I started in 1959. My brother-in-law, Evan J. Anton, was a movie producer of documentary films. And I was very much wanting to be an actor because of my family. My mother was a silent movie kid actress, Jenny wow. Gabriel. Wow. And my father was a set designer for the Lois Triborough Theater in New York. Wow. So I kind of grew up in the biz and I wanted to be an actor. So I was madly in love with Sophia Loren when I was 19 so years old. Who's that? Who's that? Who's that? <laughs> Who's Sophia Loren? You don't know who that is? You, you got to kill yourself. <laughs> One of the most beautiful well, women. Of in course the we know who she is. Well, this is this is jumping. We were born on the same day. You this know, we, is I jumping, share a birthday with her. This is jumping Gennaro. I just want to comment that hold that thought. Everybody sitting at this table definitely knows who she is because we're from the region. In Naples, except, uh, well, I think Joey's got some lovely Donham, but you're Sicilian. I'm from San Gregorio, Salerno. Salerno, yeah. Okay, so. well, we're, we're all from Genoa. Okay. My mother's family's from Venezia, Venice, and my father came from Genoa. He was off the boat. Wow. My mother was my mother was born in Ninth Avenue, Hell's Kitchen, in the theater district. Oh. That's how she became an actress as a child. Wow. But anyway, um, awesome. I was mad about Sophia Loren. And I heard that they were filming out in Long Beach, Long Island, a movie called That Kind of Woman. And it was supposed to be Miami, a railroad station where they were shooting, but it was really Long Beach, Long Island. <clears throat> so I asked my brother-in-law, I said, do you know the, uh, the director or the producer? And he said, yeah, I do. He said, uh, what the hell is the best, for, the best director in the world? I forgot his name. Hey, Fellini? Jimmy. Fellini? Fellini? No, 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 no. Uh, the, the American guy. What the oh, hell? Uh, anyway, uh, he was a, a pal of my brother-in-law's. So they snuck me in without union to be an extra in the movie just so I could see Sophia Loren. And I played a soldier. And they positioned me right where she and Barbara Nichols walked by me going down the uh, train platform. And we're supposed to jump up and down and whistle and scream. Well, that was easy for me because when I saw her, I almost dropped dead. She was the most beautiful woman I had ever seen in my life and a body of death and a wiggle when she walked. So um, I snuck over to talk to her a couple of times and they came over and said, you're not allowed to talk to the stars because you're a uh, extra. And Sophia, so I was talking to her in Italian and she said to me, your Italian is as bad as my English. And we both got along really fine. And she liked me. So she told these creeps, no, let him stay here. It's okay. I want him to stay here. And I sat in George Sanders' seat. And I spoke with Sophia Loren. Wow. Nice. I was That's just nice. sitting. You know, I wanted to make out. I wanted, was that, was know, the I movie? Sure you did. <laughs> was, you want to do more than make out there, Ron. Was, right? was the movie uh, uh, That uh, Kind uh. of Woman? Was that the movie? The movie was called That Kind of Woman okay. with Sophia Loren, Barbara Nichols, George Sanders, wow. uh, and I forgot, and a few other people. It's a, it's, a, it's a nice movie. Tab Hunter, of course, was a star, and I met Tab Hunter in the restaurant at lunch, and I interviewed Tab about 40 years later, and we talked about that incident, and Tab Hunter and I remained friends on and off over the years. Whenever we saw each other, we always you know, had a lunch or had a drink and sat down and gabbed. Tep Hunter was a wonderful, kind, sweet, uh, just a nice guy. Uh, in fact, I saw him a couple of weeks before he passed away, and he looked great. And who knew that he was going to get a blood clot in his leg and die two weeks later? Wow, but anyway, 
I miss him. He's good. But that's the Sophia story. And that's how I started in my career. Nice. And then I began working in films. I was in Let's Rock with Julia Sarosa. We shot that in the Bronx. All uh, non-SAG uh, films. Right. Then um, I, I decided to do stage because I really like stage. And I did stage for a long time. And then I did uh, television when I became a member of SAG and AFSTRA. I did Charlie's Angels, uh, Macmillan and Wife, um, Sarah with Brenda McCarr, a lot of other TV MacGyver, shows. MacGyver, you were you MacGyver? I know I was never in MacGyver. No, they put that, that down. They put that down. No, I was never in MacGyver. Maybe MacGyver? No, I don't think I was. No, I was never. You know they add bullshit to your page. Well, you but had no, you were in two episodes of Charlie's Angels, correct? Uh, one, I played a detective in the uh, Hoa, in the dirty movie theater with Jacqueline Smith. <laughs> no, I was only in one episode. Oh, one episode? Did you? So you met one all episode. the cast, I'm sure. sure. Huh? Farrah Fawcett? Farrah was not in our scene. Okay. No, I was working in downtown L.A. off of Hollywood Boulevard. There was a big porno theater, which is now a legitimate theater again. <laughs> but back then, it was a porno theater. And we shot it there. Jacqueline Smith was playing an undercover hooker because these this porno theater had women in there that were screwing the men for money. So it was really a whore house. But of course, we couldn't hua. say that. A whore house. A house. A whore house. A bunch of whores. A bunch of whores. New York. It's a whore. A whore. All whores. Whores. All whores. Whores. So it was a, it was a, I'll say it California style. It was a her house. Her. <laughs> so that Hulu that. network, Oops. is that? Are we originally? allowed to curse on your show? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Sure. Oh, that, so, okay. So anyway, I, we shot in there. And, you know, I love my scene because I was in the dark. <laughs> you could barely see me. <laughs> And I'm telling Jackie, uh, be careful, they're, they're on to you, or something like that, I don't remember. Mm. But uh, Macmillan and wife, I knew Maggie, who was Martha Ray. I knew Martha Ray from the gay bars in Florida way back in 1960. Uh, she was a, a very good friend of mine, because her, her brother was gay, and everybody used to make fun of him because he had some sort of a mental deficiency. And I always felt sorry for him, uh, and I liked him, and he had a crush on me, and I never really repulsed, you know, re, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, did not, you know, told him to get lost, like mm. everybody else did. Yeah. So Maggie liked me, and I stayed friends with her for a long time. She moved to Jackson Heights, Queens, and married Rocky, uh, Rocky the Italian boxer, Rocky... Marciano. Uh, Marciana. Wow. So I used to go up to her apartment in Jackson Heights, you know, a very minimal apartment, no big deal, and visit with Maggie. Uh, ter terrific dame. I love Martha. She was funny and wild and outrageous. Great legs. Um, and then what happened? And then I, I don't know, I sort of got divorced from my wife, and my wife left and never took the children. She didn't want them. And she disappeared for like 40 years. We never saw her again. Uh, and she died recently. and We never saw her before she died. Sorry and I that. raised my kids alone. So I was wow. not really making a lot of money in film or stage. Or, or I used to do cabaret, stand-up comedy. That's where I made my money. I toured all the, all the straight nightclubs in the United States. Um, so I... I just put my career on hold, and I went back to hairstyling, hairdressing in Queens Boulevard, Forest Hills, mm. and I made a living, and that's how I raised my kids, put them to school, you know. Uh -huh. And then when my kids grew up, I never really thought about uh, going back into business, you know. I did for a while. I did some stand-up for a couple of years, but it wasn't the same. The audiences changed. The nightclubs were disappearing one after another. And it got to be a bore. And then I met Jimmy Starr, and Jimmy said, Jesus, Ron, you have a great background. On the way, I had a television show before I met Jimmy called Set the Record Straight, where I interviewed famous celebrities from Jane Russell to, to Tab Hunter to Lauren Bacall. Oh, I wow. mean, the, oh, yeah, the list goes on. Big, big, major What year stars was that? There. That was maybe 10 years, 12, 15 years ago. Oh, okay. And all of them were friends of mine. Mr. Blackwell, uh, Esther Williams. Uh, these were friends of Jane Russell, and Jane wow. was my That was the Jimmy Starr show, right? No, that's before the Jimmy Starr Jimmy Starr, Star, okay, that was okay. 
And Jane Russell was my best friend. We hung out for years. We were like brother and sister. Wow. So she got me to all of her friends, Debbie Reynolds, all those people I met through Jane Russell. And we all became friends. Yeah. Wow. Then I, uh, I, I stopped. I hated uh, living in Palm Springs because it was too hot. And my kids didn't like it here. So I said, okay, let's go back to Long Island where we're from, where your old friends are. And we did. We moved to Long Island. And no, I'm sorry, we didn't move to Long Island. We moved to Florida and we were going to move back to Long Island. But I met Jimmy in Florida and Jimmy said, gee, you have a really good work background. Why don't you go back in the business? And I said, no, I don't think so. He said, well, he had a radio show and I had a television show. So why not combine the both? And we did. We made it a podcast. I was the first one to do a podcast before anyone did. Wow. No, no one did a podcast. We were the first. We, you know, we're 12 years on the air. Right. There were no such things as podcasts 12 years ago. Right. We, right. we right. want right. we, uh, We're actually on. We're actually been doing this for eight eight years. You're not. You're not te televised. You're just voice. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. Correct. Yeah. Right. So then we Facebook uh, anyway. Well, we do. We I, do. I went yeah. on the, the the Jimmy Star show. And because of my outrageous humor and insanity, the show shot up from a little radio show into the number one podcast show in the world three years in a row. Wow. And we have over 5 million people that come in every week to watch or listen to us all over the world. Nice. And uh, it's a good show. It's a fun show. We're honest. We're crazy. We're we got to give you. It, it sounds like starting to sound like what we did. We got to we... We give you a not so. That's how we celebrate. On the count of three. Uno, due, tre, Atso! Gatso, Gatso. Atso, Atso. Atso, Atso. Atso. I say Gatso once in a while. Allora, Gabito, mo. Si, 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 si. Scusa. Qui, yeah, qui know, parliamo in italiano, Ma per me è così parliamo in napoletano, parliamo in siciliano, sardegnese, milanese, no, come vuoi. Schiattete, schiattete, schiattete. So, uh, Ron, Ron, so, I want to I ask you real quick what? something. I want I to ask you, um, now I forget, see, because we're, we're all, uh, have you ever been to Italy? Many times. Oh, okay, great. Many, many times. A anywhere? I lived, there, I lived there for a year. Oh, hey, when, nice. when I was 17 years old. Nice. Uh, my father found out I was gay, and he sent me to Italy to get straight. Meanwhile, <laughs> at 17 years old in Italy, I had men trailing me all over uh, Genoa, Rome, or Venice. I mean, no matter where I went, I had men following me. And they would say they weren't gay, but I was. Oh. And that's how the Italian men, they're straight. They're married. They're 50 kids. And they like a man every now and then. And they tell the guy, listen, I'm not gay. You are. Well, that's because they're weird, you know. So I never got involved. I was a boy, still pure of heart. And um, I came back to America, still gay. So my father's trip wasn't... My grandmother was a bitch. I didn't like her. She was a strict old lady. <laughs> oh, man. No, 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 born... None of them appreciate it, right? Oh, no, my no, God. No, no, she was born in the Victorian era. Yeah. So she was a real straight-laced, you know, old bag. Nasty old bitch. Never let me do anything. Was strict. You had to be home by midnight, or she locked the door. Oh, I mean, she was wild. Did she find anyway, out? Did she know you were gay? I never asked her, but I think she saw me once dancing in the living room to, uh, you know, whoever, whatever albums I brought with me. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of like, um, you know, men didn't dance like I did back then. They didn't know how. Yeah. Only gay guys knew. But uh, now to your acting career, though, I did notice on on your resume. You did some horror stuff. Did you? Is this something you got into? Because oh, I'm doing that. I'm doing that now. I've got three movies out right now, uh, and I have six waiting to do. I'm busy. Yeah. Wow. I, I mean, they're not all horror movies. I'm doing. Um, I'm doing the Red River. That's a horror movie. I'm shooting that soon. I mean, I'm going to uh, Atlanta to shoot another film. Then a, a nice film called Quigley. A lot of nice films. 
uh, major motion pictures that go to theaters. So, yeah, I do horror because we have so many uh, sweet friends. They're all young guys and girls starting off in the business. You know, I don't even get money. I say, keep the money you need for the, for the production. Yeah, yeah. I'll, do, I'll do it just to help out. And it's nice to teach these kids uh, a couple of tricks. Like, don't read your lines, act a little, mm -hmm. you know, because they don't, they don't know how to act. They, right, they, yeah. They're all tits and ass. They're these beautiful little girls. I mean, I love them. Sadie Katz and Sarah French. And uh, Sherry Davis, they're all, I mean, if you saw them, you'd all come in your pants. But they're beautiful <laughs> girls. No, they're all beautiful girls with huge bit tits. They're kind of porno looking. <laughs> but they're actresses. And I told them, you know, knock off the sex shit if you really want to act. Show people you have an acting talent and a pussy. And, you know, I mean, it works. Yeah. But anyway, no, the, um, the, I love doing it. That was, that was part of my question, only because I saw some horror and uh, I saw some recent horror, but I did notice something uh, uh, paranormal stuff. Do you st do you do that? Do I do what? Yeah, and, I think so. uh, is, like I saw paranormal investigations. Well, if you go if you go in the airports, you will see me on the monitor talking about how I met Jane Russell, the movie star, and that was a paranormal story, and they they loved it and they put it up. I have not seen it yet, but I understand it's in um, the airports all over the world. What do you mean the airports? Are like, where do you where do you see? When you it go the to the airport, you sit down waiting for a plane. You look at the TV. Oh, okay. Well, they have this show now called. It, it's by um, what's her name? The blonde. Um, oh, geez, it's gonna kill me. Uh, Cardoshula Uno. She's a psychic, and she put this show together, and oh, she interviewed me. And she loved my story about how I met Jane Russell because it was a ghostly story. And they put it up on the uh, TV screens in the airport. So if you go to the airport and they happen to run it, you'll see me talking about how I met Jane Russell wow, or what caused me to meet Jane Russell. Yeah. Can you share that with us? Huh? Can you share that with us? Can I share the story with yeah. you? The long what, 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 what was the, we, what was the paranormal part about it? That's what I'm, I'm, I'm lost. Well, my partner of 46 years passed away from pancreatic cancer. I was devastated. Sorry I, was, I was beyond belief. I was numb. And I went downstairs to the library of our home. And I pulled a book out of the library you know, wall. And the book next to it was stuck to the book I was going for. And the book hit the floor. And it opened up, and it was Jane Russell's life story. And it was open to the pages where Jane was suffering from the death of her second husband. And I heard a voice, and the voice was the voice of my deceased partner. And he kept saying, find Jane, she'll help you. Find Jane, she'll... And I thought, for sure, I'm going nuts now. And I don't do drugs. So it wasn't like I was drinking or anything. I was totally sober. And I just thought to myself, boy, the mind really plays tricks on you. And I went upstairs, and my daughter was living with me at the time, and I knocked on her door, and I said, Leslie, would you believe that uncle is telling me to go find Jane Russell? She's going to help me. And my daughter said, Daddy, let's do it, because if she can help you, let's do it, because you need help. Because wow. I was seeing a, a psychiatrist at the time, because I tried to do something silly, which I won't talk about. Yeah. And um, I told him later on I, that Jane Russell was coming to my house. And he said, oh, you mean you're going to dress up like Jane Russell? I said, no, Jane Russell, the actress, is coming to my house for dinner. He said, oh, but you, you really mean that you're going to dress up and pretend you're Jane Russell serving dinner? I said, no, you dumb fuck. fuck. It's Jane Russell. <laughs> How many times so you going to tell the guy? Did, when when, when Jane fuck. did come to my house, I took pictures and I went back to the shrink and I said, listen, I'm never going to see you again because you don't believe me. This is my last visit. <laughs> and you're a jerk and, and I dumped the pictures on his desk and I left them there. I said, that's me and Jane Russell. See, she's eating. That's my table. See the fork? She's eating. Uh, that's, that, was, like that's great. That was good. Nice. You got him that's good. That's great. That's great. No, I'm not yeah. moron. That's, some, do, that's a great oh, oh, that's a oh, Uno, two, three. Hot show. I used to impersonate Jane Russell and drag years ago on stage. If a nightclub acts, a comedy, it was a comic act. Uh, and that's what he thought I was doing. Anyway, uh, the next day, my daughter and I drove up to Santa Maria where Jane Russell lives. And my daughter had a pee, and 
She said, Daddy, stop at this gas station. And I, for some reason, said, no, not this one. Wait for the next one. And we stopped at the next gas station. And we got out. My daughter went to the bathroom. And I went over to these two girls behind the counter. I said, would you happen to know where Jane Russell lives? And she said, oh, yeah, she lives on the other side of town. But here's a leaflet. She appears Friday night at a Mexican restaurant, and she sings at a piano. So I thought, wonderful. And this was Thursday, which is my lucky day. So we drove all the way back from Santa Maria to Palm Springs. No, we were not living in Palm Springs. To Stevenson Ranch in Valencia. And then the next day, Friday, we drove out. Well, there she was, Jane Russell, finishing singing. And I walked over to her, and I said who I was, and I introduced myself. And I told her how I got to be there. And she said, please come to my home tomorrow. I want to discuss this more. We can't do it right here. Because she was a born-again Christian, and she believed in the Lord sending messages and all kinds of jazz. So the next day on Saturday, we drove back up to Santa Maria. We went to Jane's house. And we stayed for hours and hours and got along so well. And we had a lot of fun. And I instantly bonded to her, and she bonded to me. And the rest is history. We just became the best of friends. Wow. We now, stayed now, now in each I find other's it, homes. I, I find it strange that you got the same last name. Is there a reason for that? There is a reason for that, because when I used to impersonate a uh, drag woman years ago, I impersonated Jane Russell. Okay. And I took her name because my name was too Italian. And back in those days, you couldn't have an ethnic name. You know, you had to be a hunter or a smith, you know, those phony yeah, fag names. I was going to say. Yeah. So my Your name was, name. My, na- my name, first of all, I wouldn't use anyway because it, it had, you know, some people connected to it that weren't so hot. But anyway. Um, what was it? What's no, it? What I, is I, it? No, no, they don't ask. He just my said real was, name? He, he, yeah, my real name. You don't yeah. have to use it if you don't want to. Yeah, huh? I don't use my real name ever because then people will bust my kids' chops because yeah, no, my no, kids no. use our real name. That's right. But no, so I took Russell from Jane. And the funny part was Jane and I went out to dinner all the time. And I went to Florida with her to uh, a premiere they were doing for her for Gentlemen Prefer Blondes at the Cinema Paradiso. They were running her old film, uh, Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. And when Jane and I got out of the limo, the paparazzi were going crazy. Uh, they were, Miss Russell, come here, come here, come here. And one photographer came over to me and said, sir, would you mind stepping out of the picture? And as I attempted to do that, Jane grabbed my arm. She said, get in this picture. And she told the photographer, you don't want him in the picture? She said, turn your camera off. Wow. So she was like, oh, she was yeah. totally wonderful. Oh, wow, and nice. then they said, Ron Russell and his wife, Jane. Nice. All right, because of the last name. Nice. Or they would say Jane Russell and her son, Ron. Or they would say Jane Russell's brother, Ron. So they really couldn't figure out the Russell connection. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, but we got a kick that's, out well, of that. Well, that's, yeah, no, that's just, it was just, uh, I saw the name and you were mentioning it enough. Yeah. That it clicked yeah. in. I'm saying, wait a minute, Ron Russell, yeah. Jane no, Russell. No, she, she was a very important part of my life. She made it. A- yeah. I love her more than anything. I miss her more. I'm going to cry. I miss her yeah. so much. You have no idea. She was the kindest, sweetest, most lovable human being I have ever met. She's... Adorable, intelligent, and gorgeous. At 89 years old, she was stunningly beautiful with great legs. She used to swim in my pool in a leg, bikini. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In a bikini at 89, she wore a bikini mm-hmm. in my pool. And she had a body like a 25-year-old. Imagine, beautiful woman. Beautiful, she, beautiful. She made a, she, yeah, she was, I mean, I, I was just showing yeah, some pictures stunning. to Angelo. Uh, uh, just her side by side with Marilyn Monroe. Just, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, you, but, I mean, she, she aged, but she didn't age differently. She just aged beautifully. She was still a stunningly beautiful woman. I mean, we would doll up and go out and everybody would turn around and immediately they knew it was Jane Russell. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they would come over to our table and say, oh, Miss Russell, excuse me, can I have an autograph? And she'd say, honey, take a picture with me. What do you need with an autograph? Nice. And they were, oh, they were so thrilled. Oh, could we, Miss Russell? She said, you sure can. Nice. And they would go next to her and they would, she would take pictures with people. Did she, she uh, was very good. Huh? She, so, she, uh, so she made a film with uh, Marilyn Monroe. Did she ever tell you any stories about her? Oh, I sp- yeah, we spoke about Marilyn a lot. A lot of stuff I will never... Reveal, yeah, right. Because right. No, she told me in confidence, 
The only thing she did say that I tell everybody is she said, yeah, the Kennedys did have her killed. That Jane told me yeah. that the Kennedys absolutely had her murdered with the mafia. Wow. Uh, and, but other than that, Marilyn, she said, was a sweet girl, but screwed up, very insecure yeah. and, uh, and, and very used. Now, Tony Curtis, who I interviewed and who was a buddy of mine, said Marilyn was always on her knees in Hollywood. Mm. And men used her. I mean, everybody banged her. There wasn't anybody she didn't bang yeah. to get her career going. And she just didn't know how to say no to men. Men yeah. would just, you know, I mean, I think there was something wrong with her mentally. Poor Joe D. He, he, uh, <laughs> well, you know, he, he knew, but he couldn't control her. Yeah. Marilyn Monroe just didn't think anything was wrong with men screwing her. You know, it was like... Even Johnny hello. Russo, our, the godfather, he, <laughs> he's got a story to tell in his book. Uh, Johnny, Gianni, you know, remember, you know Gianni Russo, right? Carlo. Carlo yeah. and the godfather. You know, he yeah. wrote, he put it in his book, so it's not like something I'm, I'm you know, when he was, uh, I think, what the hell you said, he was, say, 18. And, uh, well, like John Carlo banged her all the time. I mean, all the mafia banged her. Peter Lawford banged her. Uh, Kennedy's banged the both Robin and John. The dog's getting mad now. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think I said the dog's getting mad now. You. No, no, I think, no, no. I think we, Marilyn we Monroe is coming the spirit to your dogs. <laughs> we have a hundred. We have a hundred and thirty-five pound fila mastiff. Wow. Oh my God. And he will eat you alive. And when Oof. we rescued him, he was the sweetest thing. And he's wonderful with us. But if a stranger comes in, he wants to kill. I mean, it's <laughs> he, no, really, he goes after them to kill them. Now, Mike, he, that's jump, what he was trained. Jumper Gennaro said that <laughs> paranormally, Matt Marilyn Monroe was coming through the door. <laughs> what? what <was> <laughs> paranormally, <laughs> Ma Marilyn Monroe was coming through your door. Because <laughs> yeah, he was barking. Right. pissed off at <laughs> when you were talking. Well, talking about banging, she was, banging. She was getting mad that I was talking about it. But, yeah. yeah, but I'm, I'm not going to really. I mean, Jane knew a lot. Yeah. No, you know, they just... shot they shot for a couple of months. It took them six weeks just to learn the opening number. We're just two little girls from Little Rock, and that was a six week rehearsal. Wow. So she and Jane, she and Marilyn were together constantly, 12, 14 hours a day. And on breaks, Marilyn would be very, very uh, open to Jane because Jane was a Christian, and Jane had that way about her, like a priest, you know, that soothing way right. where you, you want to tell her things. I bet so she, she was told, an evangelist. Now, I don't. I don't. I, I'm not. I don't re recall bringing this up to you, but um, the first time you met Jane, I, I mean, I know you said Sophia Loren, and I, I don't want to get confused. Um, did, did Did you tell us how you first met Jane? Yeah. yeah. My daughter and I drove to the Mexican restaurant. Oh, okay, okay, okay. all right, Singing all right. Yeah, 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 on yeah. Friday night. Yep. Yes, yep. yes, yes. And yes. I walked up to her and I said, Jane, I was supposed to meet you 48 years ago, but I didn't. And she said, why? I said, because I used to impersonate you, gotcha. and I didn't want to meet you because if I didn't like you, I couldn't do your character well. <laughs> and I showed her pictures of myself, and there was one picture I said, oh, this picture's a bad one. And she looked at it. She said, I wish I looked that good. <laughs> and I said, oh, my God, am I really alive? Am I living to hear Jane Russell say she wow, wishes that's, she that's, looked that's, as good as me? That's, you know, that's, that's amazing story. That's uh, just uh, that is, that they're all, and they're all real. They're all true. There's no yeah, no. You know, I I brought up the uh, horror. We do horror stuff too. Uh, we do par We did a paranormal investigation. We uh, we hired uh, two. Well, we didn't hire them. Uh, they were willing to do. A, we did a Halloween uh, paranormal investigation at an old theater. Um, are you familiar with uh, New Jersey at all? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, he remember, he, he, couldn't, he couldn't find no, that. No, the Darius. Did you know? Did you ever go to the Darius Theater in uh, New Jersey? That's like one of the. Uh, no, that I don't know. Okay. But no, I have a lot of friends in New Jersey, like the Housewives of New Jersey, that area. Well, Those that, big, big McMansion. Darius Theater. That's was, where we're at. That's where we're, the studio is. Are your studios that's in that neighborhood? New Jersey. Yeah, this is where we're yeah, at. Yeah, I the love the mall. That's oh. a beautiful mall. Yeah. 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 You ever go to the mall there? Yeah, all the time. Really nice. Everybody, everybody dresses so well. You know, a lot of money. 
Nice. Out of designer clothes. Yeah. Yeah, well, I like that part of Jersey. I would live there if I had to live back east. Well, when you come uh, to Jersey, well, again, come in we'll, into the studio. That's <laughs> all! Yeah, 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 yeah. So tell me about your paranormal show. No, we, no, it was a, it was just a Halloween thing. And, uh, we, oh, we, just for Halloween? We do, we do, listen, episode, October, yeah. October is Italian Heritage Month. It's obviously a Halloween, you know, ha- Halloween month, theme, yeah. and then it's also Fire Prevention Month. I'm a retired firefighter, so October's our very busy time. So we decided to do uh, a paranormal investigation with the wise guys, and we did it at a, the Dares Theater where um, uh, Abbott and Costello was supposed to have known to have played it. It's uh, what, what the heck was the name of the theater? It's one of the oldest. Theaters it's one of them theaters in, that uh, has in New the. Jersey. Um, the entrance coming in through the stage. I forget. Uh, Val- vaudeville. It's, it's oh, one of the last yeah. Vaudeville uh, theaters left in the United States. I believe there's only two left, and that's one of them. And, oh, I'd uh, like to see that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's it's still there. Uh, there I would love Booten. It's, yeah. it's, it's in the well, country. Well, Car- 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 is always saying, Ron, when you come east, we got to do another witch hunt. And I said, sure. I said, you know, there are so many places out on Long Island that are supposedly haunted. But this movie theater sounds good. Maybe yeah. we'll give that a shot. Look it yeah, up. Absolutely. If you look it up, Dares, Dares Theater, Booton, New Jersey. Um, it's it's one of the last of the vaudeville minute. theaters Freddy, around. It's why not... don't you try to come up with the footage and send them the link? Well, I have the footage. It's on. I can send you the link. Uh, we did the whole. The, the, yeah. It's on YouTube. It's on our YouTube page. I'll I'll, I'll have a All net. Right. Is I'll, it is it on YouTube? Yes, but I'll have a net text you the link uh, yeah. once the show's over and. Uh, okay, and then we'll tell people. To yeah, watch I mean, it. it was a little spoof that we did. It, you know, but you know you'll you'll see gonna... a little history of the theater. Listen, there right? was some real. No, activity. but when we went, no, when when Cardoshula shot our. You you know, we're in a comic book, and I love that they made me look so young in the comic book. I thank them. They left all the wrinkles out, and I look so handsome and young. Uh, anyway, in the comic book, they show a scene that is a true scene. Eileen Shapiro, do you know who she is? Yes, that sounds familiar. Okay, she's got the She's the one who, who, who hooked us up. Okay, Eileen, she had the biggest tits in the world. <laughs> no, really. Her tits turn a corner an hour before she does. <laughs> no, it's true. Now, we're tr- Now the cops are not going to let us go into the hospital, which is the, um, I forgot, the crazy house on Long Island, which has been abandoned for 40 years. And it's in dire repair. It's all rusty and spooky. Now, there's an eight-foot or six-foot, no, eight-foot chain-link fence that we all have to scale in order to get in. This is a true story. You'll see it in the comic book. Eileen says, oh, I can get over that fence. Well, she got over the fence, but her tits went on one side, and she was hanging from the other side. Oh, man. I am on the other side, and all I see are two huge tits hanging over the chain link. Oh, I am God. hysterical laughing. <clears throat> she is saying, you fucking cocksucker. You're not going to help me? Pick up my tits. I can't get my tits open. Now I'm screaming. Now I'm laying on the floor. Now I got pains. Pains in my chest. Oh my God. I was going to pee myself. I oh. couldn't stop laughing. She said, Ron, that's not nice. She said, come on, my bra's hooked now. Pull, pull my tits over the fence. Oh, my God. I tell you. So now I told that story, and the cartoonist... Put it in the comic book. Oh, I don't wow. think I've ever heard a story like that. I can yeah, tell, it's listen, the first page. You're, you're, you you're, Eileen's tits let me let me tell you something. That's that's that's, that's close to listen to this. That's close to to my story where I went crabbing with a professional wrestling uh, little person. I don't want to say the other uh, the M word because uh, we have a little person on the show. But I went <laughs> crabbing in 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 Hackensack, New Jersey. Ooh. With a little person who was a professional wrestler who drank a case and a half of beer, and I was while I was wondering where the beer was going, it started coming out, and it came out like a like a like a like a like an open faucet for like five minutes, and I, I almost I literally almost died <laughs> laughing so hard. But uh, well, you know, on another note, um, let's let's go, let's seriously. Uh, I want to thank. I want, first, I want to thank you for giving us this uh, conver- this opportunity to interview you. But I also want to ask you, what do you have going on now that you'd like to mention? Oh, what do I have going on now? Anything? Well, anything uh, you want to promote? Lot, Any websites lot, that you want to promote them? Well, I have three movies out: uh, Clown Fear, Clown Motel, and what's the third one? 
I forgot. Oh, the big friggin' rat. Yes. And the big friggin' rat is not available for another couple of weeks. Clown Motel will be out to be purchased in a few weeks. But Clown Fear, you can get at Target, all those Walmart stores, you know. What about social social media, any websites? Social media, I'm on everything. And uh, I do the Jimmy Star Show with me on Wednesdays for two hours. I'm reading, I'm writing a script right now that we're going to do with Lainey Kazan called The Gift of Magic uh, that we want to shoot in uh, February. Hold, I hold, have the, that, the Red River coming up. So I have a lot of stuff. Any on relation display. to Ilya Kazan? No, Lainey Kazan is not related to Eli Kazan. No, no not at all. Well, and People the, think so. Well, you know who Lainey Kazan is? Yeah, Epic sure. Every yeah. wedding. Yeah. yeah. A great about, singer, also. One one other question: uh, what, What's your thought about them eliminating Ronald McDonald from McDonald's? Why would you want to get rid of Ronald McDonald? The cloud. They got rid of. Him. They don't show him anymore. Why? Because he's haven't... gay, Jewish? Why? No, no. Not because a, uh, people were people they were, were afraid of him. Were not afraid of him. They were committing uh, acts as Ronald McDonald. Really? They, yeah. Oh, I didn't. I didn't know, I didn't know that. that. Yeah. The world's going fucking nuts. Yeah. 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 Ronald McDonald. You ain't kidding. I mean, where are they talking crazy? about? Because you're talking about the clown horror films. Yeah. Yeah. Well, They're... how'd you like uh, Columbus Circle when they were threatening to tear down the statue? And a million guys from Brooklyn with guns that was the best. went yep. around the statue, that and they was, said, "Come on, should happen every time. Take, should happen try every and time. Take this statue down." Right. And that every, was all my friends from Brooklyn. My every boys. time that happens, that should happen. We're gonna try to get one back up in Newark. We were just talking yeah. about early in the show when you uh, yeah when you they watch gotta it. cut this fucking bullshit with changing slavery yeah. and changing all the laws and the words. You can't call your mother your mother. You gotta call your birth person. Yeah. Get the uh, fuck out of yeah. here. Yeah, right. I mean, what are they all nuts? You, you're young you're son of a absolutely a thousand percent right. right. They're Fuck all them. They're all, don't you understand? Don't let me start. No, 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 we got to stop this because I'll flip the fucking commies. table over now. <laughs> you're going to get me going you. nuts here. No. No, our country now is being overthrown by communists. Well, that's. that's and, if you, and if they don't see it or know it, they're stupid. Yeah. That, that's that's what we're there for. We're there for the, a voice for the Italian American culture and heritage. We 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 fight. We're yeah. a voice for Italian Americans, and and it's and I and I we've been promoting that we need the young generation to to learn. And no, to, they don't give a shit. They don't even know they're Italian. But they got to be I'm taught. A, I'm a hundred percent Italian. Gentle, nah, gentle, nah, gentle. Ron, Ron, let's take that back though, because yeah. I'm I'm 33 years old, and that's what I'm trying to promote on the on the show right now. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm talking also, about also, the super. No, I'm talking I think about the super the young. Really yeah, that's true. That's yeah. No, but we got to get there. The super young it has to be taught by their parents. Yes, yeah, it's, yes, that's, yes. Yes. come on. T- t- ten or eleven year olds. If you ask them what are you, they just stand there. They were feel afraid to talk yeah. because some of them might say I'm white, and if you say you're white, you're a racist, and if you say you're Italian, then you're you had slaves. So the young kids today are afraid to speak. Can you imagine? Well, you, and, that, you, and that's and this is what they're getting taught in school. Yeah, I know they are sick. because that's I have sick. friends that are school teachers on Long Island. Yeah, well. I could tell you stories and make your hair stand no, up. No, but uh, listen, when you're in town, please reach out to us. Let us know. Um, we'll set something up. We have your number. Uh, we'll, 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 uh, we have a few I'm restaurants. doing a big event with Soho Johnny. And, we just uh, saw him. Yes, he's our buddy. Oh, he's my best buddy. You can, he's my, my, my goomba. Nice. I'm doing a thing with Soho, I believe, in... Late September, Let or maybe know. early August. Oh, that's what October. we were supposed to have Soho on the show, but he never got back to us. But we, he's a friend of ours. We'll, we'll, we'll definitely listen. When you're in town, we have uh, the uh, we have uh, family members here that have uh, restaurants that all run through the family. It's all it's all part of the family, the wise guys. And um, listen, it, whether... your family knows my family in Brooklyn. I could drop <laughs> names. I'm sure we all know each other. There you go. Yeah, it's better we just we talk in person. Right. <laughs> so, no, but... in person, of course. You think I'm going to use no, the names? No. I know. I, I'd be in jail tomorrow. But Ron, I, I do. I want to thank you so much for this interview. I, I got to give you. you. Yeah. I, I'm uh, really looking you. forward to meeting you in fun. person. Um, you're, you're you're a great guy. Thanks I, for keeping I, it real. Yeah, yeah, you kept it you real. Guys, well, I am real. I don't do any bullshit. I hate fucking liars or phonies. <laughs> I always <laughs> do. Hey, I'm from Brooklyn. No. And in Brooklyn, you lie. You get beat up. Yeah, yeah. that's right. And you so, know, when I was a kid, any guy that was a bullshit artist, we would nail him. I mean, <laughs> Brooklyn, Brooklyn people of my generation, I'm 81 years old. So at my generation, people are so 
different from the people today. Yeah. yeah. We were honorable, honest, stand good up, guys. Stand up guys. Never Let's... squealed, never, never was a cop caller, never did anything bad. We were good people. Right. Well, let we us please, let us know when you're in town. We'll definitely hook up and we'll sure have a great will. time. Definitely we'll do One it. One more Thank time. You. Ron Thank Russell. You, Ron. Thank, you so much. Thank you, Ron. And we'll Thank be, you. We'll, and ha, ha, fun, fun ha, interview. Have a great bye rest now. of the summer. We'll see you soon. You too. Bye-bye. Right. Okay, bye. Bye. Wow. Man, that, that was something else, huh?